Good afternoon. Hello. How are you, Mr. Paz? Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me, Nisa. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we are excited to talk to you and hear from you um, at this point during our election season. You are running, you are obviously the interim uh, treasurer for uh, Santa Cruz County, and you are running for election. Um, please tell our you know, community members and voters um, a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, you've said my name, but I'll repeat it again. My name is Alejandro Paz. I am uh, born and raised from Nogales, Arizona. Uh, went through the public system here, did a lot of volunteer and community work here. Um, and then I graduated and transitioned over to Arizona State University, where I obtained my Bachelor's of Science from the School of Letters and Sciences in Interdisciplinary Studies with a focus and concentration on business management and tourism management and development. Um, that's while I was at Arizona State University, I was also um, working full time with Wells Fargo Bank. That's where I started my 11 year career with them and had the pleasure of uh, holding six different roles, uh, which include teller, lead teller, personal banker, service manager, branch manager, and then ultimately my last position was the Wells Fargo at Work program manager, where I oversaw 52 Wells Fargo branch locations and partnered with the branch managers and their staff members to educate them and provide them with the tools and resources. And of course, the risk mitigation factors um, in the banking sector to make sure that uh, not only us as the employees were making the right decisions and making sure we're mitigating risk, but also that we're educating our customers or potential customers or just community members um, by partnering through uh, business banking groups with Wells Fargo and identifying their customers in the public and private sector who would benefit from this program, um, as well as educating and training our district managers, our regional presidents, um, our bankers, branch managers, service managers, and of course the community on the products and services um, but not solely that, but how to make sound decisions when it comes to finances. Um, in that transition, I also earned my real estate license and became a really active and successful real estate agent. Um, that actually uh, was part of my decision to transition down to back to Santa Cruz after having left for 15 years. Um, and as in the state at the same time, I was also working full time with the University of Arizona Financial Services Department at the same time. So um, then this opportunity came about uh, under unfortunate circumstances. Um, and I, I remembered clearly that I always also stated I would make it back to Santa Cruz County to make an impact, you know, put my little grain of salt in the best way that I possibly could. I'm a big advocate for community development. Um, and just community outreach. And so um, banking, financial services, real estate, it really goes hand in hand with the position of the treasurer. And so that's what motivated me to uh, submit my application, uh, interview for the position amongst other three other candidates um, and ultimately be selected unanimously, not solely by the board of supervisors, but by the other 10 members of the interview panel that were there. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you tell us why you're the best candidate for the job? Well, I think I just highlighted the main points really as to why I am the best candidate. I have a, had a really successful career with Wells Fargo and the University of Arizona. Um, aside from my own duties and responsibilities within each of those roles, I always strived to do more um, and do better. And so I a lot of the times became what the banks would call an advocate, either for recognition or for risk management, for volunteering. Um, there's different um, advocates for different focuses. And I had the pleasure of being an advocate for almost all of the positions available and being that go-to resource for my peers um, to help them be successful. So I have a lot of the risk mitigation knowledge as well due to the bank and the positions that I've held within the bank. And with the treasurer's office being the county bank, um, it really shows, I can really bring that expertise and that knowledge into the county's treasurer's office to make sure that we better our policies, our procedures, 
and make sure that we have more oversight with more checks and balances. Um, and I know exactly how that works and how to implement it if it's not in place. Um, I have a bachelor's degree, like I mentioned. So I did study specifically with one of my concentrations, a lot of business courses, financing courses, accounting, calculus, et cetera, that really helped me understand the financial system and how it all works. Um, I, like I mentioned, I'm a big community outreach person. So I've also identified that this is a great opportunity for me to make a bigger impact outside of the treasurer's office as well by being the voice for the community within the treasurer's office. Um, you touched a little bit on my next uh, question in your answer. Um, a lot of attention is being focused, obviously, on this year's election of treasurer uh, because it's important, but also because of the recent, you know, allegations against the former treasurer. Um, this has contributed, I feel like, to a breakdown in trust in our county government. Um, what do you feel is the role of the county treasurer in restoring the public's trust um, is the first part. And um, what do you think needs to be done from the treasurer's office to help restore trust and, and faith and um, just communication? You'll hear this probably across the board from every candidate running in the current elections, but transparency. One of the main things is transparency is key and it's actually mandated by state law um, that the treasurer's office, like many other elected positions, um, provide this information to the public on a monthly basis. And so that's part of something that will be happening um, as soon as we are uh, done with the ongoing investigations and we, we can um, clarify or redo whatever must happen with the actual number so that we can be reflecting and providing accurate information. Um, so transparency is key. Um, and right now it's a little bit challenging to be as transparent as one would wish um, because I'm in there. And so I am legally bound to not speak about certain things um, which come across as me not being transparent, but that's not the case. Um, I shared it in my social media where I am eager to speak to the community and provide them with the information that they so well deserve. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that we're respecting the law, we're respecting the investigations, and that we're not jeopardizing the investigations because we all want to see one particular outcome out of this or two particular outcomes, right? We want justice for the individual responsible of uh, the alleged crimes, and we also want to recuperate as much of our money as we possibly can. So um, it's not that I'm not being transparent. Um, and at the right moment, when I'm allowed to, I absolutely will be uh, transparent. Um, the trust piece, it's, it's a challenging question because it's going to be hard to earn from those who aren't giving it to me ahead of time, right? And those, I think, for those who have entrusted me in this position, I've had a I have had plenty of people come up to me and thank me for my courage um, to step into such a challenging position in such a challenging time. Um, there was only four applicants and we have a lot of community members in Santa Cruz County. And so um, it's not something that everybody's willing to do, but I think when the right person jumps up at it and does a good job at it, um, it's recognized. And so I know that a lot of people are seeing the hard work that me and my staff are putting into rectifying the situation and making sure it doesn't occur again. Um, and part of that goes with the cross training functions of my office, unfortunately, uh, and at no fault to my current staff, um, they weren't cross trained. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was it was really, it would have been really difficult for anybody um, who doesn't know what they're looking at to identify a problem, right? And so we are now creating more checks and balances, starting with the cross-training of all functions of the treasurer's office. And what one person does, that same person does not approve or review. We have other peoples and other channels to make sure that we're, we have more checks and balances um, in place. And that goes for almost every single function of our office, where there needs to be at least two set of eyes, um, reviewing and approving 
transactions, deposits, wires, movements, check writing, all of that, that takes place within the treasurer's office. Um, and then the other piece is that I'm really eager to start on and hopefully it can start up as soon as elections are over, if I'm elected, is really like a treasurer's 101. It's my focus because that's that would be my department, right? That's my area, my office. Uh, and it would be my idea is to educate first everybody within the county um, that works within the county of the treasurer's office, the treasurer's functions, our roles and responsibilities by law or not law, whatever the, the case may be, and then their functions as the entities that are mandated to bank with the treasurer's office. Once we get them on board and get them educated on everything, we want to expand it out to the community because these are public funds. So I want to make sure that they are also fully aware of what the functions of the treasurer's office are, because unfortunately right now there is a lot of misconception out there as to what the treasurer can and cannot do. And so I think with providing clarity and understanding to the community, um, they'll be able to then know what to look for um, maybe what questions to ask, and they should be able to know exactly what they're looking for and know what questions to ask. Have you hired new staff since you've been in your position? Um, and just kind of what's the general size of the treasurer's office? Currently five staff members in the office full time. We have not hired any new um, tax clerks or personnel. We do have a posting out for a chief deputy position, um, and that's been posted for a little bit of time now. And so we're hoping we'll get a good uh, pool of applicants um, with people with experience uh, for the responsibilities and the roles of the chief deputy. So um, yeah, right now we have a staff of five in office. Okay. Okay. Um, I think just a couple more questions for you. Um, Obviously, besides the gut far story, um, what do you feel is the biggest issue facing um, the treasurer's office in in Santa Cruz County? What is yeah. what's your what is your I mean you're in the position now. What, what is your biggest challenge if there is one besides the gut far story? Honestly, the biggest challenge is the system. Mm -hmm. it works right. It works. It allows us to do what we need to do. However, it's so outdated that once you do something, you can't redo it. You can't reprint, right? It, it's a really weird system. And so I think that's one of the biggest challenges is just, you know, especially learning the system. Um, you should see me sometimes. I mean, I'm nervous before I hit the enter or, you know, do I really need to hit option four? Because it's so outdated that it, we had a situation like in August, around August, where it was a glitch with the system in the middle of uh, one of my tax works processing the warrants that mm -hmm. were getting paid out. Um, unfortunately, that created for the system to be deleted for the entire day. Mm -hmm. And so we then had to go and redo everything again. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the new system, that will not be the case. We won't mm -hmm. have to go through those troubles and create chaos out of really a small little problem mm -hmm. uh, or a small little glitch that the system had. It wasn't even like we did something wrong. It was just the system glitched, ruined it, mm -hmm. and... It had to get restored and redone. And so we were able to get it done. We, we, we got it, we got the job done, but it was a stressful time. It was like, oh my gosh, we got to make sure that everything that we did gets redone. And even then uh, we had one small transaction. I think it was like $4 that double posted, uh, you know, it didn't delete it from the prior one, but then we redid it thinking it had deleted everything. So uh, luckily those things we can correct. Right, we can reverse those transactions, but there are some times where you can't, and then you have to go through a whole a day of re-entering everything you've already done. And so that's the biggest challenge, because aside from that, the treasurer's office is mandated by state law. And so there's a lot of the things that we have to do regardless, and they're working well. Um, it's just a matter of learning them and, and making sure that you learn them right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I think I have one last question for you. Um, what is your favorite part of the job? 
I mean, what's the, your favorite part of the day or week? I really, I, I don't know that I have one favorite part because I really do enjoy my job. Mm -hmm. I am there 7.30 in the morning and I'm leaving after five. If I don't, if I leave sooner, it's because I have another engagement out in the community. I'm also a board member of the Boys and Girls Club. So mm -hmm. I do leave sometimes, but for the most part, I'm there 7.30, at least till five, if not later, um, because I truly enjoy the job, the functions of the treasurer's office and the responsibility. It's a big responsibility for somebody to manage. And the fact, again, that I was selected from a large panel unanimously, and I'm able to do the job well right now already, I mean, it's, it's, it's my favorite thing to do during the day. Um, but I really like doing all of the reporting um, and because it really allows me to look at everything from beginning to end to make sure that the end result that we need or we should have is there and what takes place in between. Um, so I'm really into that piece right now where I'm really diving deep into a lot of the reports and to, for greater understanding um, so that I can then be a better asset to the community and to those districts that bank with us when they come and ask questions. Okay. And I have one more. Yes. One more favorite thing, actually, that just came up to mind. Yes, please share. It's, it's the people that come in mm. or the people that call us. Um, and we get a little bit of everything. We get happy clients. We get mad clients. We get indifferent clients. Um, sure. Every interaction is unique. Um, and my goal with every interaction is to make sure they're not already happy and they're leaving happier that they leave happy if they're not happy. And so um, we've had a lot of those uh, engagements with customers who, due to the situation with this gut bar pertaining to that directly, or just one off with their particular parcel or their tax um, who have come in and, and had questions or concerns, um, I take the time. We take the time to invite them in, to speak to them, to really look into what they are concerned about, and we provide them an answer or a response in a timely manner. Um, and that it really is one of my other favorite parts because that's what this role is. We work for the people. Um, so it's, it's, it's my favorite to see them again happy and if they're not happy, leaving happy after we've resolved their issue or we've informed them of the exemptions that are available. That's not a role or a responsibility of the treasurer's office. That's not a function that my treasurer, that the treasurer's office approves or denies or even gives you an application that's with the assessors but we educate every single constituent that comes to our to our office or calls us by phone of the possible exemptions that they may qualify for because we do want them to take advantage of those and so um, providing them with those added benefits that they may be eligible for or not is really rewarding because a lot of them have come back and you know thanked us or just simply while they're there they're like I never knew about this and so um, it's it's really important that we do highlight all the opportunities that the county has not just pertaining to our office and so um, if we can be that office where they go to for any need and we can direct them or provide them the assistance then we will gladly do so yeah okay well um mr paz thank you very much um for letting our readers and our viewers um just know more about you um if you uh, have anything that um, you want your voters to know before they um, cast their ballots, uh, feel free to share it with them now. I do want to take a couple of minutes, one, to say thank you, uh, because the primaries were absolutely amazing. Um, I was a write-in candidate for the primaries in July. I needed to, at least 250 votes, and I came up to almost 1,700 write-ins. Uh, in the primaries, which is um, unheard of. <laughs> I believe nobody within the county has ever won an election as a writing candidate. And so I am just extremely thankful to those that casted their votes, whether it was for me or for not. Um, voting is extremely important, so thank you. But even a, a bigger special thank you to those who did again entrust me 
to take on this role, to be their treasurer for Santa Cruz County, and who took the time to write my name on the ballot. Because it's not, I know it's, can, some people can forget. Um, they don't see it out of sight, out of mind type of thing. So I do want to thank everybody. I had a great time visiting all the voting centers on election day. I've had a lot of fun going out to a lot of community events and knocking on doors. So thank you as well for opening your doors to me, being receptive to me, asking questions while I'm there as well, taking advantage of while I'm there. Um, and um, so thank you guys for that. And then due to that great outcome in the primaries, I am no longer a write-in candidate. My name is officially on the ballot for the November 5th, 2024 elections. Um, and so I ask that now you just fill in the bubble. You don't need to write my name in, fill in the bubble if you wanna vote for Alejandro Paz for county treasurer. And I will reiterate this again, um, I do have an open door policy. Come and see me, come and ask questions, give me a call. Um, see, if you see me out on the street, walking in neighborhoods, or you see me at Walmart buying my dog food, stop me if you feel like it. Um, I work for the people, I'm here for the people. I am not an eight to five person. So if you do need to reach me, or if you see me after those hours, feel comfortable to come up to me. Um, and talk to me. And so I've shared that multiple times. I've had, I think, a handful or two of people who have taken me up on that. Um, so I invite more if you guys have any questions, concerns, or just want to get to know me more, know me better, and identify why I might be the best candidate or why I am the best candidate for the treasurer. Just have that conversation with me and I'll be happy to do so. Okay. Thank you so much again for your time. Um, we will see you soon and um, good luck. Thank you, Nisa. I appreciate it. Have a good day.